couldn't. I do appreciate you taking out the time to listen in your leisure time. All shows are pre-recorded after the 6 p.m. and after the 9 o'clock p.m. so that you can get a full, full listen to all the shows that I've done so far. And also, welcome back to the Boss Ladies page on Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube. (laughs) What are some things you know you need to say no to and why? What are some things you know you're saying yes to that you need to say no to and why? I'll say this. I had to say no to a lot of things last year that I didn't think that I could say no to because I was so accustomed to doing that, Um, such as, you know, certain habits with finances, certain habits with family, and certain habits with friends that I had to drop in order to succeed in the places that I need to succeed in so I could get to the purpose and destiny that God has called me to, you know, be in my life. And saying no has a lot to do with saying no to certain situations that may not be feasible at that time. Saying no to certain people. um, Saying no to certain relationships because it's detrimental to your health and well-being. And it might not be an opportunity you need to take at the moment. But just to think before you do stuff. And I think that was the biggest thing that I had to say no to. What's more important and what's not important. The things that I was saying yes to, I had to think about was the beneficial to me in my future. Um, versus who, you know, is, you know, in front of my children. You know, who was the best role model for them. And it all starts with me. So I had to make sure the people that I was hanging around was also suited enough to hang around, not just me, but also influencing my family. So since I'm a leader in my family, those are the things that I had to do in order to figure out what was no important and what was yes important. So here's some tips, and we can talk a little bit more about those, about being firm in your decisions, being clear about the decisions that you make, Not making too many excuses because they're unnecessary. Prioritize those things that you decide and learn more. So on that note, let's get some EDU in our lives. We are going to go to... I had an article that I wanted to read. In here. And it really talked about really saying no to certain things and how to differentiate between, I know we as women, we tend to say yes to a lot of things because we don't want to be, you know, disappointing to the ones that we love. But we also have to think about our well-being first because if we're not straight first, pretty much if you're a leader as a woman and like I am, you know, you'll be so quick to move on things that really don't need to be moved on in the first place but 510 is part of the um, beatitudes when jesus stood on the mountaintop and taught these things and one of the things that stands out that i want to elaborate on tonight is matthew 5 chapter 10 5, chapter 5 verse 10 it says blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness sake for theirs is the kingdom of heaven there's a lot to be said about persecution in, um, in terms of righteousness. But I don't want to talk about persecution as far as being religious. I want to talk about the inner persecutions that you have within yourself when you say no to certain things. And those things that you're saying no to may be very, very hard to um, you know, make a decision about because disappointment sets in. And it might not just be you disappointing yourself per se, but you're also disappointing ones that you've always said yes to. Like when your kid wants something for school or they want something for just extra activities. You know, you may have to say no to those things because it may not be in a budget and whatnot, or it may not be there for you to do. And no parent, no good parent wants to tell their child no, but sometimes no is required in order to put the personal uh, ver- wants versus needs into perspective. That's what I wanted to say. 
Dang, I hate I lost that page. Because I was really going to get to that. Unless it's in the beginning part of here. But as I'm thumbing through trying to find that um, article I was going to read out of my uh, out of my um, women's Bible, you know, I can sit back and think about all the things that I've said yes to, like, you know, certain things at work. You know, if it don't have nothing to do with work, I'm not doing nothing outside of work. But then I have to take a chance on rebellion from people that, you know, take work to a whole nother level. Um, at home, you know, I talked about, you know, saying no to your kids about certain things. They don't understand why you saying no at the time. But later on in life, when they get older, they will know and understand why you said no. And I think that's with our relationship with God, you know. He tells us no to certain things. And we question him. And I know a lot of people say, don't question God or whatever. But um, it's a lot of leaders in the Bible that question God about why he said no to certain things or why things should be done a certain way. And he was open to answer them. And then as they went through the journey, and as they grew and developed more, they began to see why God told them no to certain things. And why it wasn't feasible to do those things yet. It wasn't that he didn't want us to have them. It was just dangers that we wasn't aware of. And he was protecting us from something. And that's why I feel as a parent, I don't say no to my kids because I don't want them happy. I say no to my kids to protect them from the unknown horrors that might they might encounter. Um, that they think will be beneficial now, but it won't be in the future if I let it just fester and not tell them why I said no in the first place. So, I think that's what we're dealing with here in terms of saying no. Um, And there's also a difference, um, too, of refusing to settle for no. But there's also different types of no's if you want to get into that. And I'm just so tired of looking for this thing because I know it's in here. Um, what other examples can I think of? But the thing that will make it clear to people why you would say no it's being firm, not disrespectful. Um, being clear about why the no is there. Um, there's no excuses attached to it. It is what it is. And this is why. The experiences that this person is telling you no that's over you or authority or whatever. Gives you an opportunity to figure out. What they've learned from the same experience if they had the same experience or what experiences that they have gone through to overcome this disappointment because a lot of no's brings disappointment so we have to um put those look that in the face and say hey i need to be able to deal with this even though it doesn't feel good right now and then it's also a part of your discipline i believe as well so, if I cannot find this, which I'm not seeing, I'm not coming across it at all. Um, should be coming close to it. Here it is. So, I'm going to take this little author article by Anderson Blair. And it says, Stress Management, Learning to Say No. And it gives us some Bible scriptures that we can look over. In order to take care of stress management and spirituality. Because you can be spiritually drained. Just like you could be mentally drained. You could be physically drained. But people are so stuck on one subject. That they tend to forget that there's a spirit inside of all of us. That needs to be fed and nourished. As well as our mental and physical health. And this article gives us some explanation. And help us to understand why this stress management of saying now works for us and how it can be applied to us. And it reads, one of the greatest combinations of blessings and burdens that black women carry around is the legacy of not being able to say no. 
We are socialized to take care of our families, our friends, our communities, and everyone else but ourselves. A woman's natural desire for acceptance can create stress. Feeling that you can meet the needs of your family and friends will also create stress. This anxiety can be compounded with the thought that our personal needs will not be met. This malady runs so deep that we are often consumed with guilt at the thought of putting our needs before someone else's. However, for the sake of sanity, sometimes that is just what we need to do. Alleviating stress begins with learning to say no and recognizing your strengths and limitations. By taking time out to revive ourselves spiritually, mentally, emotionally, and physically, we're actually doing our loved ones a favor because we are better equipped to attend to their needs. When we are tired, it is harder for our light to shine before others as the Bible commands us. See Matthew 5.16 The character Big Mama in the movie Soul Food serves as a good example of what happens when we take care of everybody else and reserve nothing for ourselves. Inevitably, we fall apart at the very, and the very people we feel compelled to take care of have to reverse roles with us. The very idea of saying no drives many of us into hiding with the thought, I shouldn't be so selfish, or I can't put myself first. It's not right. They need me. True, putting oneself first is not always right, but rather than automatically saying yes to every request, we need to evaluate and determine when no is appropriate. Sometimes no is the right and healthy answer. Although it will not be easy, we must learn to say it. Self-deception, pride, and independence can prevent self-awareness and discernment. Jeremiah 17.9 God must give the self-awareness needed. He can show you where change is needed and lead you to bring about that change in your life. Psalms 139.23-24 Having been programmed to say yes all our lives, Saying no will feel uncomfortable at first. However, as you practice saying it and offering alternatives to the demands on your time and resources, saying no will become easier. Others will be taken aback at first, but you will feel better and ultimately serve them better. Once a woman acknowledges her dependence on God and submits to his will for her life, stress will disappear. Read Jeremiah 17.9 See also Psalms 139-23-24 and read Insight Essays on Depression and Distress. <laughs> Signs you need to work on setting boundaries. Are you being resentful after being asked too much from people? Disappointment for not saying no, but yes instead. Do you feel less appreciated? Is your space respected? Are you stressed often? So now I'm going to take this to an article that I was reading earlier. I did like it very much. I'm going to find it, pull it up real quick. called Saying No to People Making Demands on Your Time by Elizabeth Scott, updated April 12, 2017, off www.verywell.com. Are you overscheduled and overstressed? With today's busy schedules, you're not alone. One important way to pare down your schedule is to get good at saying no to new commitments. So, why can't it be so hard? Maybe you've had people be upset with you when you've said no. Maybe you feel guilty because you really want to help others. Maybe you feel guilty because you really want to help others. But you say yes so much to them that you're on the verge of burnout. And this will make you less healthy and less helpful. Whether you say yes instead of no out of guilt, inner conflict, or a misguided notion that you can do it.